on the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV for episode 0012, Installing Your Linux Server Part 3, Installing and Using Webmin. Well, no Achnerwald, no snowy landscapes, no, it's straight from the core, from the base, from the underground layer of the fortress of digital um, cacophony, if we can call it that way. Now it's straight from the night castle, straight from the office, because I am trying out the entire production of the uh, KWTV series using my MacBook. I'm using it to record the screencasts, I'm using it to record these videos using the iSight camera and doing the entire editing and uploading using just one computer. Why, you ask? Well, in a few weeks I'll be going on holiday and well, we might just shoot uh, a uh, KWTV episode in the south of France, and we have to test it out before it works, shouldn't we? So, what are we going to talk about today? KWTV 0012, part 3 of the Ubuntu server series, is going to deal with Webmin. Now, imagine your NAS, your NAS drive, or your router, or some... A network device that you can approach via your web browser in order to configure it. These are called web-based interfaces. For example, if you set up a port on your router or you need to set up a share on your NAS drive, more often than not you will find it uh, to be uh, something you can do using just your browser. Just enter the IP address of that device and you can configure it. Very, very, very convenient. Webmin is kind of the same thing for your Linux system. So instead of entering commands via the command line, going ticky 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 in uh, complicated config files, why not have the luxury of most web-based enabled devices on your Linux server? Webmin is just that. Webmin is an application you can install on either a Linux workstation or a Linux server. You can also install it on a Mac and on a PC if you want to, but it's not that functional as it is in Linux. It will enable you to configure that device or that server using your browser, using any browser. If you're on a Windows system or a Linux system or you're on a Mac, if you can run a browser and you can enter the IP of your Linux server, you can configure it. Now, this kind of cross-platform web-based stuff is something that we really really like. Now, why is Webmin so fantastic? Well, A, because it's cross-platform. B, because you can use uh, a browser. You don't need to install any application. C, because it's terribly convenient to configure your Linux server and to do all kinds of cool stuff without having to use the command line. And, most importantly, because it is something you can do either from your local network or over the internet. So, Great ways to configure Linux servers using nothing but a browser and point-and-click technology, really, really letting technology work for you. So let's get into installing Webmin and using some of its functionalities. <laughs> On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome back to KWTV. Today we're going to do part three of our server series, where, you, where we continue to take a look at how to set up and control our Linux server. If you haven't watched the two earlier episodes, please go back and watch the KWTV episodes, where we talk about configuring your Ubuntu server. We're going to talk. Uh, we talked about how to install the server and how to connect to it using the command line and that is exactly where we pick up the slack today. Today I'm going to show you some nice ways of configuring and controlling your Ubuntu server and uh, giving you a nice and helpful tool to get things done with it. We've talked about controlling the Ubuntu server via the command line and that's all nice and dandy but you can do just a little bit more and we're going to show you how to do that today. In order to do that, we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to connect to the Ubuntu server that we set up using SSH. Now, you can do this using the terminal on a Mac or you can do this using PuTTY on a PC. And how to do both of those things is being covered in depth 
on the previous episodes of our Ubuntu server series. So today what we are going to do is we are going to install Webmin, which is a cool web-based interface for your Ubuntu server. You might have a, uh, I don't know, Linksys router lying around the house or a NAS drive. A lot of those devices come with cool web-based interfaces that allow you to control the device. This is very user-friendly. It's a very nice way to let technology work for you. And that's what we're going to do on our Linux system today. So, as we get started, we are going to connect to our Linux server. We do that by, of course, SSH, your username, at the address of your server, in my case, that one, and just hit enter. Now it's going to ask you for your password. Now the username has to be the username on the uh, known on the Linux system, of course, not just any uh, username on your local system. It has to be a username on the Linux system. You enter your password. There you go, and you are connected, as you can see blah 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 nightwise at the name of my Linux server. What we are going to do first is download the package uh, called Webmin. In order for you to do so just uh, surf on over to www.webmin.com. This is a place where you find the Webmin package of course but also a lot of documentation about how to use the Webmin system. Now it's pretty easy to do but I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, work with the several uh, modules or pages in the Webmin software a little bit later on. But in order for us to do that, first we are going to install the Webmin uh, package. There is a Debian package available and if I click on that, that will be downloaded to my local system. I'm working from my MacBook Pro and I'm connecting to my uh, Ubuntu server far, far away. So that's not really going to work. So what we do, and it's quite easy, you right click on the link to the Debian package and you choose copy link location. Minimize your browser, we'll get back to this one later. And since we have a window open on our Ubuntu server, we just are going to download that link we just copied to our Ubuntu server. So in order to do that, we're going to use the command wget. And wget is a command line command that lets your Ubuntu server download a certain file from the internet. So I'm not downloading it on my local MacBook, no, I'm really telling my Ubuntu server remotely to download the package that I just specified, to download the link that we just copied. So I right click, I choose paste, and what it's basically going to do is going to wget, so it's going to download that link that we just copied. Hit enter, and as you will see, the entire package is being downloaded. Now, wget is a pretty cool command. There are a lot of options to this, and if you look around a little bit, you can find it to be very, very powerful uh, to do all kinds of cool stuff with it. But I'll do a doku cast on wget because it's a little bit too technical. Now, the package is downloaded. All we need to do is type ls to see if we got it. Yep, <coughs> here it is. And now we're going to install it. Installing a Debian file that we just downloaded, <coughs> this is a wdeb.deb file, it's pretty easy, so just type <coughs> sudo, because you're doing th this as a root user, dpkg space, which means dpackage, minus i, which means install, and just type web min, and then hit the tab key, because your computer, your server, will actually uh, type in the rest of the command. You hit enter. It's going to ask you for your password. Hit password. And it's going to unpack that entire package. Now, it does say that there are some errors when I wanted to install uh, the package. So it seems that I don't have some other packages installed. So I can just do fix that by going sudo apt get install minus f, which tells my Ubuntu server to get all the packages that I need that were mentioned above here as being missing or as not available and download them automatically. 
and just hit yes, and there it goes. As you can see, it's it has downloaded all of the packages and is now continuing the setup of the Webmin application that we just started. So it's pretty cool, you don't have to worry about anything and um, you can just go ahead and do what you wanted to do. Now as you can see, Webmin install complete, you can now log into HTTPS Stargazer, but you can uh, put the IP address of your uh, Ubuntu server here and port 10,000 as a root with your root password. So we're going to see if it worked and we are going to connect to our little Webmin server using our browser. OK, we have installed Webmin, time to go and use it. So in, uh, instead of our uh, cute little command line window, we can now switch to our nice little web browser and enter the address of the server that we have. HTTPS, because it's a secure connection, good thing, that means that the traffic between this browser and your Ubuntu server using Webmin is secure, nobody can sniff it. Colon slash slash, the uh, IP address of your Ubuntu server, 10.0.10.105, and the correct port number, 10,000. Hit enter and you'll be presented by a username and a password. Now your browser might say something about a web certificate being self-signed. That's because the HTTPS certificate, the uh, well uh, key to the secured connection actually, is being generated by your uh, Webmin server, and uh, your browser might be a little bit conspicuous of that, but don't worry, since, uh, since it is an internal address, uh, you don't have to worry about that. Now, enter your username, and your password, and log in. And there you have it, the Webmin interface. Looks cool, doesn't it? So, um, You'll, you'll get a dashboard right away, so you have uh, your host name, your operating system, but the most important thing is how much memory is available, how much memory is used, how much disk space is available, and how much disk space is used, which is, you know, that's pretty convenient if you can just, you know, look at it from the top of your head. On the left side, you will have several um, well, categories of modules. A certain page that Webmin uses to control a certain event or system on your Webmin server is called a module. For example, if you have an SSH server running, you will have an SSH module to control that server. If you have a web server running, you will have an uh, Apache module to control that web server. So the entire Webmin website, if you want to call it like that, is built out of modules who are uh, organized into these little subcategories. If you're not really sure and you want to do something and you don't know what the module or the component or the page is called, you can also use the search option. Now, we're going to take a look at uh, just a few of them, starting off with the Webmin uh, modules themselves. Now there are several things here that you can do. You can back up your configuration files, but that's when you're done with the entire Webmin thing. You can change change the language and the theme. You can take a look at the log. Uh, you can uh, add more Webmin users, so if you want other people to be able to administer the system using Webmin, you can create them here and you can take a look at the Webmin configuration. This will give you a whole lot of options that you can play around with and you, that you can do with Webmin alone. For example, you can change which IP addresses can access your Webmin server. For example, if you say, I only want my computer with my IP address to be able to access my Webmin uh, page on my Ubuntu Linux server, you can set that here. If you want your Ubuntu server to listen uh, for Webmin traffic on another port or on, on an ad other address, you can do so here. But the most important part is to keep your Webmin up to date. So in order to do this, you can click the Upgrade Webmin button and you can tell uh, your 